one of the most horrific things you can do. His life was taken in a senseless and brutal manner. Horrific crimes left unsolved. You know, you have a lot of different scenarios run through your head. Could it be this person? Could it be that person? And families forever changed. I was 13 when my mom passed away. Just come and tell me what happened to my son. That's all I want to know. We're sharing these stories hoping you can help us solve this unfinished business. Any cold case can be solved. No one's perfect. In this episode, we're taking a look back at the case of Tammy Feike, whose life was cut short in 2005. Now our investigators are taking us back to when it all happened. So before we get into Tammy Fickey's case, I want to talk a little bit about your background. You worked in New York City for many years. Can you tell me a little bit about how you got into this line of work and why it means so much to you? I did 25 years with the New York City Police Department. Uh, almost 20 of them I was a detective. I worked in the 113 detective squad, which was South Jamaica, Queens. Uh, for I was in my, almost 12 years there. And then I finished out my career with the cold case squad. And as an investigator, as a detective, um, the pinnacle of a detective's career is working homicides. Um, and there's nothing better to do as an investigator. And uh, a victim that's no longer here and a family that's still around, uh, that's what our job is. It's, and that's why, what, why I put in for the job down here when they, when they started the cold case unit, and, and that's why I'm here today. And being here now and seeing kind of this start from the ground up and being able to breathe new life into a lot of these cold cases, specifically the case of Tammy Fickey. Tell me a little bit about what that's been like, digging into that case and kind of reevaluating all of that. When we started it up almost, almost three years ago, the agency did a great job having all the open homicides in one place and creating a unit where our sole purpose is the open cold cases. A lot of agencies in the country have active detectives working homicides that are called fresh, they come in any time, they work those, and when they can get to the cold cases, uh, they try to get work on the cold cases, which is very, very difficult. Up where I came from, they had a specific cold case unit, and the sheriff felt it was a necessi necessity to start up down here, which is a phenomenal, phenomenal thing to do, uh, to come in every day and know I'm only working on homicides, and that's it, and there's no other responsibility for the unit. Um, it's just the, it's, it's the best thing you could do for, for the victims and the families of those victims is to have detectives, their only job is those cases. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been going strong since we started. And speaking of those victims, specifically Tammy, can you give me a timeline of what we're looking at here? I know this happened back in 2005. Tammy was in her th 30s. Um, unfortunately, she had a drug dependency and she had a kind of a live on, a, live on the street kind of uh, lifestyle. Uh, it doesn't mean she had the right to become a victim. She's still a victim. No one, no one should be able to take anybody's life, no matter their social or economic uh, background. And uh, on um, March 12, 2005, unfortunately, her demise was caused by another individual. And that's why we're here. Can you give me any more background into the process that you've taken to investigate her murder? And where it goes from here. Her case, like all the cases we pick up and reinvestigate, uh, we basically take the case folder and triage it on our own. We, we read it like a book and we go over all the evidence, all the supplements, all the notes, everything in a case folder and we try to bring an independent uh, insight in it. We don't take the word of everything on the page. And I think that's important for a cold case investigator. Don't lean it. Investigators lead in directions. You don't want to lead, lead in their direction. You want to look at it as a whole and start over. Um, in her case, we started from the beginning, beginning of the case fold and worked our way to the end. We looked at the evidence recovered, uh, what was processed in the past, and uh, then we reevaluate and restart it up. Then that's going at interview witnesses, looking at the evidence, conferring with uh, FDLE or private labs, and then sending uh, evidence for new forensic testing. There's such advances every couple of years that it's important to look at what, what could, even if it was tested in the past, what we could retest. Mm -hmm. In Tammy's case, is there a person of interest right now? Yes, there is. 
can you give me a little bit of background? I know this is an ongoing investigation, but what background can you give us on that person of interest that could help maybe bring more witnesses forward? Well, the person of interest uh, in our in our modern investigation, we've been able to identify him. This individual had a nickname back then. We were able to identify him. Uh, we were able to interview him in the recent past. Um, we've also went back and interviewed uh, individuals that were interviewed back at the time of occurrence. And we're still currently looking for new witnesses, if anybody saw anything or was around that night when it occurred. And as far as her background, do you have anything that would give us a better indication of who she was, her life here, her family here, if they're still around? Um, we recently talked to a couple of uh, cousins of hers, I mean, a cousin and his wife. Um, her parents are deceased. Her, there's no siblings around. Uh, but we did touch base and let them know that we didn't forget about her and that we're currently looking at it. Um, unfortunately, sometimes when you contact family, you give them hope. Uh, it also brings up uh, sadness. And it's a tough call when you do that because you give them hope and sadness at the same time because it brings up the memories. But uh, the family was uh, very helpful with the fact that they went over her trouble that she had in her life and how she separated kind of when you usually when you become dependent on drugs and live that street lifestyle you kind of separate yourself from the person you were and your family because the family usually tries you to st tries to have you stop or tries to get you help to stop so that was all stressed by the family um but hcso still working diligently to solve this and all of our other cold cases yes without a doubt these cases aren't just stories, they're real lives and real people. Your voice could be the missing piece in this puzzle. If you have information on this case or any other, please contact the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office at 813-247-8200. Do submit a tip anonymously, call Crime Stoppers of Tampa Bay. Join us next time as we continue our journey to uncover the truth and bring these families the closure they have been waiting for. Until then, stay vigilant and keep seeking justice for these families. Unfinished business.